Well, after all the fist fights, the gay days, the transgender characters, Disney is now pushing for the U.S. government to pass a federal law protecting gay marriage. There's an article here at the New York Post. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Cultural Confederacy here. It's early Saturday morning. Doing this on the overnight shift, so a one-take video. It is what it is. So I apologize about the camera angle. Forgot my tripod. But it says here that Disney has signed a letter in support of a federal law to protect same-sex marriages after taking a drubbing this year over its response to Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay law. Now, I never really agreed with this Don't Say Gay law because it's right in line with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. But all of these social issues should really be brought back to the state level. That's where they belong. Federal government has no business getting involved with gay marriage or with what type of car you should buy or what temperature you should set your air conditioner at. They have no business telling you any of that. They need to stick with what they were designed to do, which is protect the homeland and oversee international trade. That's it. Everything else goes back to the states. Talked about that before. So the Mouse House signed an open letter spearheaded by the human rights campaign, urging the good old human rights campaign, urging the Senate to pass the Respect for Marriage Act, which has already passed the House. The bill seeks to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act passed in 1996, which there should have never been a Defense of Marriage Act to begin with, because again, this is a social, uh, social issue or construct that should have gone back to the state. which barred the federal government from acknowledging same-gender couples married under state law and didn't require states to legally respect same-sex marriages performed in other states. Now, in 2013, you have this ruling, U.S. versus Windsor, which was struck down, or, or it struck down DOMA and allowed for the LGBTQ uh, marriages in the country uh, to be legally recognized. But recent statements made by Justice Clarence Thomas in his op open opinion that overturned Roe v. Wade suggested that the court might be looking to overturn rulings like Windsor. Oh my God, what are these ultra-leftists going to do at that point? And Disney is, as it's talked about here, one of 173 corporations that have signed the letter, including Apple, Google, Sony, Amazon, NBC Universal's Comcast and Goldman Sachs, of course, all the usual players, all these ultra leftists, ultra woke companies that are losing money. Quote, Americans from all walks of life across demographics, geographies, and party lines agree that loving, committed couples have the right to be respected and protected under the law. Well, I'll agree with that. But the federal government has no business getting involved in Straight marriage, gay marriage, transgender marriage, whatever type of marriage it is, whatever the social issue is, the federal government has no business getting involved in that. And they have no constitutional authority to get involved in that type of issue. Might be hearing uh, my door uh, to the lobby here opening and closing here as people are coming and going. It also talks about how as in this quote, as many as of us highlighted in our support for marriage equality in 2015. Are, are these people stuck back in the Obama era? I thought that gay marriage was already legally recognized by the U.S. Supreme Court. So why are they uh, trying to rehash this, make it federal law when it's already recognized by the Supreme Court? So the patchwork of inconsistent and discriminatory state marriage laws goes against our company values and makes it harder for us to do business and to recruit and retain top talent. No Google, no Goldman Sachs, Sony, Amazon, NBC Universal. The states should determine what's best for the state. Did I say to determine term? Can you tell it's early in the morning? I can't get the word that. As I said, a one-take video. It is what it is.
The move comes as the Mouse House is embroiled, I love that Mouse House, in a war with Governor Ron DeSantis over its opposition to Florida's parental rights and education law, which bans teaching children about topics including gender identity and sexual orientation before fourth grade. Now, Disney CEO Bob Chapek did not come out against the legislation, which angered LGBTQ employees and allies inside the Mouse House, causing massive backlash and employee walkout. Well, I think I would be more concerned about people having fist fights in your amusement park and uh, bringing more people in and keeping the cost down so people can afford to go to your amusement park, Disney, than I would worried uh, being so worried about transgender rights or gay marriage when the Supreme Court already said that gay people have a right to marry in this country. But he backpedaled denouncing the legislation and offering a $5 million donation to the HRC in March. Ah, it's all about the money, folks. It's all about the money. As exclusively reported by the Post, the HRC refused the money partly because Disney didn't secure acceptance from the group before publicly announcing it and putting it out in a press release. The gesture landed with a thud when HRC said publicly it would refuse a donation until Disney took meaningful action to combat the legislation. Well, here's an idea. Disney, why don't you just declare yourself independent? You're an independent entity in the state of Florida, but why don't you just do what a lot of these states are planning? Why don't you just succeed and become actual Disneyland? Welcome to the land of Disney, where we have fist fights, transgender characters. We charge you an arm and a leg to buy a hot dog. That's what you should do, and just see how successful you are. This is somewhat of a lengthy article, so I'll keep it brief here. In April, DeSantis signed into law a measure that dissolves Reedy Creek Improvement District, which operates as a autonomous entity on land straddling Orange and Osceola counties. So there you go. There you go. You could have this autonomous zone, and Disney could do whatever it wants. And the state of Florida could do whatever it wants, and they're both happy. So this autonomous entity on land straddling Orange and Osceola counties that has the power to levy taxes, build infrastructure, grant licenses, and institute its own zoning laws. The new law dissolving the district doesn't take effect until June 2023. The turmoil at Disney extends beyond its beef with DeSantis. The company is at a cultural crossroads in some ways, walking a tightrope to appeal its broad swath of fans that include uh, conservative families and young liberal uh, customers and employees. Nothing worse than doing the overnight shift and trying to read something at like 5 in the morning. Some critics have accused the firm of becoming too woke in order to appear more inclusive and politically correct, angry Disney diehards. For instance, Disney recently ditched the term fairy godmothers, I didn't know that, for more exclusive gender-neutral titles at dress-up boutiques inside its theme parks. That's just scraping the bottom of the barrel, if you ask me. But it's gay day at Disney, I tell you. It's it's gay day, you've got to wear your transgender dress, You've got to use the proper pronoun. In fact, you don't have to use any pronouns at all. This is a very safe space for all you liberals out there. You ultra leftists. You have to. This is very safe. It didn't. I'll probably get in trouble. People saying they're making fun of people who have a list. Last summer, Disney scrubbed the use of ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from its theme parks and changed its once strict dress code policy. Theme park employees now can show up to work with visible tattoos in whatever gender costume they wish. Has also changed some of its rides that may have appeared insensitive to customers. Rides that are insensitive to customers. Oh, you mean uh, like, uh, what is it, Splash Mountain? So they give an example uh, example here. (laughs) Disney removed a shrunken head dealer character named Trader Sam from Jungle Cruise and got rid of the Take a Winch for a Bride scene the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. It's just a ride. Pirates of the Caribbean is just a story. It's a movie. So this is just a ride. Should we get rid of uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? 
Now, the scene here at Pirates of the Caribbean depicted crying women tied together with ropes, for instance, which is a very common practice back in the day, uh, during the pirate days. How is this offensive? That was the time period. Everybody knew pirates were bad. So it's called Pirates of the Caribbean. Even so, the HRC's open letter supporting the Respect for Marriage Act marks one of the first known public stances that Disney has taken in support of LGBTQ rights since its March controversy. So this is at the New York Post, and I always like to give credit to the author, so let me scroll up to the top of the page here. This is by Alexandria Steigrad, last name S-T-E-I-G-R-A-D, and I believe this came out yesterday, the 29th. So Disney signs letter in support of federal law for same-sex marriage. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, or find me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. This is the Culture Confederacy scene. Peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country. And I'll catch you next time. And thank you for letting me stumble on my words as I do this first thing in the morning on the overnight shift. Catch you next time. Whoops, I just bumped my computer.